what happens if we lose all farmlands in the process of urbanization? What if I say there will be no traditional agriculture in the coming years? How do we get food? Do we sustain these situations? This is today's episode of Thinkable on Vertical Farming. By 2050, the world's population is expected to grow by 2 billion people. Feeding will become more tough and it's really a big challenge. As urbanization and industrial development, we are losing the farmlands every day. As per the scientists the earth has lost one-third of arable or farmlands over the last 50 years. We don't know how much more we are going to lose in the coming 50 years because of increasing food demand due to growing population. Along with decreasing arable or farm lands one of the greatest challenges facing us. Vertical farming is the practice of growing to produce in vertically stacked layers. In this farming we can use soil and hydroponic or aeroponic methods. Vertical farms attempt to produce food in all challenging environments where land is rare or unavailable. The countries which are in vertical farming are India, USA, London, Singapore, Israel, Japan and many more. There are four critical areas in understanding how vertical farming works. Physical layout, lighting, growing medium, sustainability. The primary goal of vertical farming is producing more food per square meter. To accomplish this goal, crops are cultivated in stacked layers in a tower life structure. Secondly, a perfect combination of natural and artificial lights is used to maintain the perfect light level in the room. Technologies such as rotating beds are used to improve lighting efficiency. Thirdly, instead of soil, aeroponic, aquaponic, or hydroponic growing mediums are used. Coconut husks and similar non-soil mediums are very common in vertical farming. Finally, the vertical farming method uses various sustainability features to offset the energy cost of farming. In fact, vertical farming uses 80 to 90% less water. They can also use vertical inclined surfaces or other structures, like used warehouse shipping container. Modern vertical farming uses indoor techniques in controlled environments to meet the vegetation environment requirements. The various environmental parameters such as light, temperature, humidity, gases, etc. are controlled as per need. Benefits of vertical farming Due to proper management of environmental parameters, herbicides, pesticides or fertilizers are not required. Hence the crop production is organic and healthy. They have potential to yield more in small places compared to traditional farming. They reduce CO2 emissions by decreasing reliance on coal-burning power plants and eliminating use of vehicles to transport food over long distances. Moreover vertical farms use renewable sources of energy which has many benefits. Water can be used more effectively in a vertical farm. It reduces deforestation and land use to a minimum. This reduces erosion and hence leads to less flooding. No weather issues and hence no crop failures due to droughts, floods, etc. Hence it helps in getting year-round crops. Drawbacks of vertical farming. They rely on data collected from sensors in order to maintain ideal growing conditions. Initial cost of installation is not attractive to the developers. It leads to potential loss of traditional farming jobs. It displaces entire agricultural societies, only limited variety of plants or vegetables can be grown. This is due to the fact that all plants are not suitable to be grown in the controlled and limited environment. So, if this urbanization and industrial development continue to grow, vertical farming is the only way to produce food. So yeah, this is all today's episode and we will come back with another interesting topic.
hit like, share and comment below if you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more interesting content.